Mesdames, Messieurs, bienvenue à cette édition de décryptage sur Africa 24. Le professeur Bénédicte Okeorama est le président de la Banque africaine d'import-export, spécialiste senior de l'économie et du commerce en Afrique. Le professeur Bénédicte Okeorama était au Cameroun en visite de travail dans le cadre de l'ouverture de la plateforme Afrexim Bank pour l'Afrique centrale. À Yaoundé, au Cameroun, cette infrastructure sera centrée sur la facilitation de l'exportation des produits trans transformé et manufacturé. Une fois de plus, bienvenue sur Africa 24, professeur Bénédicte Okeorama. Le Cameroun va accueillir le siège régional de la Banque africaine d'import-export à Zimbang. Qu'est-ce qui justifie le choix porté sur ce pays Pour Zimbang, même depuis l'inception, l'idée et l'understanding des founding fathers was that uh, the continent was diverse. Uh, so they wanted uh, the African Export Import Bank to be organized in such a way that it takes account of diversity so that it is gl global in what it does but acts local. Uh, and the journey to this vision uh, is through the regional offices we are opening. And that's why we've opened the regional office for the Anglophone West Africa in Abuja, the regional office for the Francophone West Africa based in Abidjan, the regional office for East Africa based uh, in Kampala, the regional office for Southern Africa in Harare. We had the, an office for the Maghreb region in Tunis. Uh, during the crisis in Tunisia, uh, the operations were suspended, but we are beginning to engage with the government to reopen it. And of course, the only missing link in this whole puzzle was the Central Africa region. And that's why we are very pleased that Today, we would be marking the commencement of operations from this office. Uh, recall that we signed the agreement to set up the regional office uh, in 2019, December. The pandemic intervened, uh, so we couldn't start operations immediately, but uh, we've surmounted that hurdle. The office is ready. Thanks to the generosity of the government of Cameroon. Quels sont les grands axes de votre plan de soutien au secteur industriel africain quand on sait que l'industrie est le socle même du développement de vos activités? Based on the experience on the projects we are developing now for our offices, we expect that we will be investing between 100 and 120 million dollars to develop that office. Now, why? Because we made a decision, um, and our board approved that, to develop our offices into Africa Trade Centers, called the AATCs, the African Bank Africa Trade Centers. The Africa Trade Center is a concept that we developed to create a network of trade centers that will serve as hubs for trade information and linking businesses all across the continent. Okay. So uh, each Africa trade center will have the office for Africa but to stay, offices for others, a trade information hub, an exhibition facility, a, um, a hotel facility, uh, a, te a, a technology incubation hub. Au Cameroun, comme dans de nombreux pays africains, la question du financement des petites et moyennes entreprises est une problématique persistante qui entrave l'essor du secteur informel. Vous misez sur des investissements de près de 5 milliards de dollars sur les 100 prochaines années. Est-ce que le financement des PME sera pris en compte dans le portefeuille de vos banques partenaires SMEs are drivers of, in, of any economy. Uh, and in the context of the AFCFTA, there's a lot of emphasis being paid on, AF, on SMEs and women. Uh, and the reason for this is that if you look at it today, the entities championing intra-regional trade are SMEs. 
The entities championing international trade are women. So they have already the experience trading all across borders on the continent. So it makes sense to build on that. And that is why we've created an SME unit in the bank to enable us to support them better. Because SMEs are, uh, have special uh, peculiarities that we have to deal with to be able to support them in an efficient uh, manner. What we want is to have the SMEs to operate in, in traffic and trade supply chains. We want the SMEs to act as indirect exporters. We want to see how we can create structures that can formalize the trade, informal trade, that the SMEs and women are currently doing. And that is why we've, uh, we've developed the concept of the export tr trading companies, which will act as aggregators of what the SMEs sell. Uh, and that makes it easier for us then to finance the SMEs using products such as factoring, receivable finance, reverse factoring. Uh, it makes it easier for us to get trade information down to the SMEs because the export trading companies is one that will manage information. Quelles sont les missions d'Afrex Zimbank et quels sont vos objectifs? Yeah, the, the AFCFT and Afrex Zimbank are called the join in the heap. Uh, the Afrex Bank was actually founded to uh, drive intra-regional trade. And it was founded in the anticipation that one day we would have the AFCFTA. So the idea was that you couldn't have a continental free trade agreement without a financial institution that would give it the teeth. So what that then meant was that as soon as the, the agreement was signed in 2018, um, we began to engage the African Union very, very actively to be able to provide the support that uh, is expected of an institution like ours. But beyond that, we have uh, developed the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System. This Pan-African Payments and Settlement System will make it possible for Africans to trade among themselves in their national currencies. This system is what will make it possible for SMEs to be much more involved in intra-African trade. Ces derniers mois, la région de l'Afrique centrale fait constamment face à d'importantes pénuries de liquidités, ce qui impacte considérablement l'essor des activités économiques. Au regard du volume de vos engagements envers les États et même les structures bancaires de façon générale, quelle est votre recette pour contourner ce problème de liquidité I think there's, uh, there's sufficient liquidity, perhaps, in CFA franc. Okay. I think there, is, uh, there, there, there may be liquidity challenges with respect to foreign currency, the US dollars, and all that. Mm -hmm. And for obvious reasons, countries are beginning to recover. So the liquidity issues are there. So you have payment delays sometimes uh, in terms of uh, in traffic for, for international trade. So what are we looking at? We think that in the first five years here, we will do uh, ab almost five, more than five billion dollars in business. Okay. And those five billion dollars would bring liquidity uh, that will support trade. Um, liquidity that will support international trade, liquidity to some extent will support intra-regional trade. Yeah. Um, the, we believe that the five billion dollars will make it possible for this region to receive the imports they need uh, to create the export capacities in processed goods. We believe that you need this kind of foreign exchange resources to do the infrastructure that is required to make it possible for this region to trade more with itself and with the rest of Africa and in fact the world. Rappelons que vous avez soutenu les efforts de lutte des pays africains contre le coronavirus avec le décaissement de plus de 6,5 milliards de dollars américains en 2020 pour ces pays. 
aujourd'hui, comment les États africains peuvent-ils transformer cette crise en opportunité et améliorer le rythme de croissance qui était le leur avant 2020 So we've, we've uh, intervened in the, against COVID very, very aggressively. Uh, and that's because we understand uh, uh, how to manage uh, uh, shocks. As early as March, we launched the Pandemic Trade Impact Mitigation Facility. I mean, March last year, once the pandemic was declared. It didn't take us time to get a board approval to implement a Pandemic Trade Impact Mitigation Facility. That facility made it possible for us to attack the two aspects of the crisis. The health issues, to help countries to procure the goods that are required to, uh, to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. And then, of course, to make sure that the countries, our member countries, are able to adjust in orderly manner economically to the crisis by making sure the, the mid-trade debt payments that were falling due. Uh, As we speak, we disbursed about seven billion dollars since then. That is uh, maybe the second largest disbursement made against the pandemic to date. Then we also did something, worked with the uh, UNECA, Mr. Strive Masiwa, the AU envoy, uh, the Africa CDC, to develop the uh, African Medical uh, Supplies Platform. Pour finir, professeur. Quels sont les objectifs d'Afrex in Bank pour le continent We are the biggest financier for the Dangote refinery. Uh, we have about a billion dollars financing for that Dangote refinery. It's a project of about 19 billion dollars valuation today. The, that refinery is called the Gote Refinery, but you have the petrochemical plant, you have the fertilizer plant, you have the refinery. It's the largest single train refinery in the world. If I come to this region, we are a big financier of the uh, Uh, the, uh, the port the, in uh, Gabon, the mineral port, as well as the, um, the Arise Industrial Park. Okay. Made a huge impact for, for that country, uh, for that region. In this country, uh, we've supported uh, bananas, uh, which, is, uh, which is critical, you know, especially uh, for the SMEs. President Bank has done a I can continue to, to, to read them off, uh, but instead of looking back, we want to look forward. We want to make sure that the AFCFTA is successful. Okay.